Cool, cool. New arrival. And this should be interesting going up some kind of canopy over here. So this in here is hopefully the starting of a uh, new boat tent. Oh, I'll grab you. Also want you. This will probably be the first job, but uh, you know what? Let's uh, let's open this first. <laughs> Oh, I actually do want to check this out because, uh, where is it? There's one in particular, like I'm very familiar with this kind of thing, but there was one thing I saw online, ah, here we go, this, the beauty of this is there's only one pole in the centre and it's freestanding, so I'd like to give that a crack, if it's not too complicated, <laughs> if it's practical I'll definitely uh, give it a crack, if not I guess just something like that. And spacing it out between the boat. Anyway, that's cool. What have we got in here? Oh wow. I think uh, he's hooked me up with a few things actually because I I didn't order that. <laughs> okay, that's nice of him. Okay, I did order this though. Little grill. It's definitely keen to use that. I think uh a little open fire with a little grill plate. I think uh, that will be pretty awesome. But what we really, really, really ordered here is the tarp. Let me check out. Here we go. Ultralight tarp. This is the one. And I definitely ordered this. <laughs> Ultralight ground bug net. Lovely little carry bag. Fuel's maybe a little lighter. Oh no, it's about probably the same, if not maybe slightly lighter, but similar thickness to the hoochie. Oh, the tent pegs obviously, <laughs> by the sounds of things. There we go. Yeah, nice. Oh, it should be plenty big enough. Now that I'm seeing it, it's almost seems too big. <laughs> Three meters sounded about right. Guess you wouldn't want any smaller. So I'm thinking one of these ends, like say this end for instance, goes up the front of the boat and then we stretch out to the sides and then we have to find out a way to deal with the sides because it's going to be pretty wide and then this stretches to the back of the boat. But there's a lot to think about here. So yeah, maybe we'll put the bilge in first, let that dry and then I'm just going to continue to work on this and try and figure out a real clever way to do this with the parts I've got. Here it is, big build, but uh, you know, this is the, uh, oh my God, I'm sinking. I just want the water out as fast as possible build. So it doesn't have to turn on often, but when it does turn on, I just want it to pump as much water out of the boat as possible. <laughs> so we'll put that on just uh, in the back here. Just keep it close to the wiring and in the center. It's an automatic build. So if we do run into any kind of strife, like a huge crazy storm, or we can take a water over the bow in the uh, bar, we've got a backup plan because the self drainers are good but you really have to be moving at speed before they start to really drain fast so um, yeah and if I'm stuck in a storm and I can't drive the boat we got big problems you notice that I've got my battery box strapped down to the floor now just undo this. So anyway, we've got the battery box off. And you notice I've got a second fuel tank here now. So if you look back here, I've ditched the two front fuel tanks unless we really need them. Because I've got a plan for this area here. And I want it all to be free. And then we've got a second fuel tank at the back which starts directly in the centre here. Everything's now stowed under the seat, so the battery box is now permanently strapped in under the seat. Uh, and then that keeps the vents clear when I'm hosing it off and any of the water splash up that comes. Plus the battery's a little bit further forward, plus the fuel tanks are a little bit further forward and protected from a bit of the elements under here as well. And it's just plug and play, like I unplug that fuel, plug it straight into that tank, and then we just keep going.
that's the Insta360 camera that everyone was asking about, and it's on this super long pole that extends that extends that selfie pole up to three meters. So I've been using that. So that's a new camera, but unfortunately, all my other GoPros have uh, carked it. <laughs> so this is this one that uh, was in the video the other day, and the salt video. This one's pretty much dead I think I should try it up and now that it's had some time to dry but you can see I'd already fixed because a lot of people said just get a subscription to GoPro and you can send it back but as you can see this one the one I'm using right now is way worse than this one actually <laughs> I've like glued the whole edge on it because it started to leak around the edge so I've kept them going these are Hero 9 so we did get a, a fair go out of them so I can't complain too much but this one that I'm using now has a leaked seal here and uh and i'd done the rim here and the front was starting to go so i'd glued this end but now it's just it's just totally given up yeah you can see i've glued it up so i don't think i can send it back to gopro and try and do the subscription trick and truth be known i've already sent this one and the one i'm using now back uh once already because they both at some point did leak and then they replaced them and these ones were pretty good but we're finally at the end of the run. This camera seems to be working, but it, it'll only be uh, an out-of-the-water camera from now on. But we'll get a new GoPro. I think we'll go Hero 11. Like, I put a lot of thought into like switching to, say, a DJI or another product. Unfortunately, as good as these are, they're not. the quality's not quite there when it comes to just um, these kind of shots and talking to camera and the sound quality. So I can't just use the Insta camera. Um, maybe the next round of those though will be actually up to scratch because you can use it in single lens mode but what I am thinking is I still will go GoPro and go Hero 11 they are really a good product in a lot of other ways even though they do have their quirks and you do have to sort of uh, um, sort of just bear with the uh, the freezing and the overheating kind of things and bits and pieces I know it sounds crazy they would have to put up with it but even with that going on they are kind of still the best for like option DJI maybe but I don't want to um, go across to a DJI because I've got I just bought all these new batteries the enduro batteries on these trips I'd probably go through at least maybe I'm always rotating at least say six batteries and I just bought a, a new six and it'll come with a new one as well so it's like if I go the DJI option I've got to buy a whole stack of more batteries and I'm and that'll very quickly put me back up to the same price that you know that I'd be saving if I went that route so I think we'll just stick with the GoPro. GoPro and the Insta360 seems like a winning combination. Anyway, let's get these little uh, things on. Sorry, this is as much a uh, just a catch-up video and chat uh, as much as uh, an actually getting things done video, isn't it? This has got the glue in it. We can just squish it shut even more. Ah, hot. <laughs> Should glue it shut just fine. Beauty. Nice. First things first, we want this mount back. We're going to reclaim this and then we can uh, get another one of these at some point later for a beach umbrella. I literally had the rod holder in here and it just went straight down into that rod holder and so we'd actually just have a beach umbrella here for the family days and it covers this whole front section. It was actually quite good. <laughs> Simple solutions. Perfectly. Now we can just tighten these because we know that their star pattern is in the right spot. Oop. 
Looks cool there. I'm just using whatever I can find. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. spot there. Here we go. And we'll just go with black thread, who cares. And she's back. Yeah, it's not that pretty, but it'll hold. <laughs> Really get a good shot of the trailer. We got a beautiful thing. That's for sure. <laughs> Look at those wells. Out of control. All right. That's how I've been getting the boat. We're missing magic hour. Look at it. Adjust it all the way down, but the uh, hydrofoil is doing a great job. So we've let our engine warm up a little bit. And we've got a little bit of water under us now because there is a sandbar that stresses out there. But this hydrofoil, the front doesn't lift at all if I don't want it to now. It'll keep it down on launch, and then as soon as it starts going forwards and we're getting up on the plane, I start tilting up and it's like amazing it just it goes where i want it to go now kind of thing whereas before there was definitely a moment where you had to really wait for it to adjust and make sure you know you tried to keep the nose down as much as possible for as long as possible now it's almost instant and it changes when i want
hit the spotlight for a sec and have a little mini cast. But yeah, I think this is the morning to do it. <laughs> Okay, so good morning. Uh, yeah, we've just come down. Uh, thought, well, it's much nicer to have a look at the new boat tent uh, in its real environment. And this is just the local creek. But uh, it's a beautiful sunrise and just nice to get the boat on the water again. So I did go for a fish yesterday with intentions of doing the sort of the boat talk there, but I didn't end up doing it just simply because uh, I didn't catch the fish I wanted. And by the time I got in, I realized that it was actually like um, really brown and really gross so I was like yeah this is not gonna happen so I thought I'll come back to my local in the morning and show the tent off and then we'll split that other video up into a separate one and make something nice with uh, the fish um, but yeah it's beautiful here today he's a bit midgy so I might need to put some bug spray on yeah we'll just have a cast down here for flatties just for a bit of fun, see if we can get a fish on board, just for like half an hour, and then we'll get the tent up and show it off. And then we'll race back for school pickup. <laughs> look, who could resist? Jeez, it does look pretty good, actually. Definitely not taking it too seriously, but there's a couple of little sandbanks around the edge. Oh, we actually want to go over this edge here, so probably should start heading over there. Over this sandbank where the water's sort of starting to flow up over it because they'd like to ambush stuff on there. <laughs> that could have been a little funny. She's getting shallow. Uh oh, there's a log. <laughs> and the bees we're not going to get a bladder this morning i thought we'd get at least a little one maybe my little bait's not the best for it a bit too big but i guess now's the time to put the tent up it's a beautiful sunrise it's done <laughs> so I'll chuck this in here just for now but all right we'll just uh let the motor run on spot lock but yeah, no, it's uh, there's been a lot of considerations with the tent, and uh, I've sort of been trying to, you know, um and ah about how how intricate and elaborate to go. Um, but we've we've I guess with these things they t typically like we have one crack at it, we figure out what worked and didn't work, and then we have another crack at it and another crack at it, and usually by about the third time we're looking pretty good. <laughs> so. Uh, I'll get it set up and then we'll go through and we'll talk about uh, how it all went and why I think it was a good idea and a bad idea and um, and uh, yeah okay so what we've got is we've got that's the mattress we've got a sleeping bag and then we've got the boat tent now the boat tent is small and uh, thin and uh, that's pretty much key to everything I usually try and keep everything pretty uh, pretty lo-fi and pretty uh, small and as light as possible that's I guess just a habit of being on small craft so yeah we've reduced it down to simply just the mat the sleeping bag and then a small tent oh that's just a pillow but that folds up to nothing which is great and we're just left with this so this was the uh, finished product for mark one <laughs> so I had this spare little bag that came with my bivvy but so you'll notice originally the plan okay was to use the um fancy new tarp i brought but uh, the problem was okay unfortunately i tried every which way but unfortunately it was actually too big and too square <laughs> in the end so the whole reason i got it and was really excited about it well it was two reasons so it's still good but the first reason was um that it was square and i thought the diamond shape would sort of attach at the front and sort of spread out to the sides and then I would just pin the sides out and that would be pretty good and but, but my maths was a bit out and the amount it had to come out in the sides was almost like a meter on each side once it's sort of squared up on the boat in a diamond shape and it just became pretty apparent that it was just going to be way too big and um 
the front and the lengthwise coming back to the back was perfect but yeah the sides were just way too much to deal with and i just couldn't bring myself to cut a new tarp <laughs> so what i did is i revisited the old hoochie now the hoochie was always too uh here come the cockatoos such a chilled australian bird aren't they <laughs> this is noisy as but uh I couldn't bring myself to cut the new tarp, but so we revisited the old hoochie and I realized if I split the hoochie up and the cool thing about having the new Altone tarp is now I will use that as the new hoochie because that's actually a bit bigger than say half of the old hoochie and the old hoochie was getting a bit scrappy anyway so I ended up ripping all the uh, fly screen off one second yeah, so basically the old hoochie was looking a bit scrappy with uh, the, the fly screen that I'd had or like the, the mesh that I'd had sewn on it anyway. So it was time to rip it apart and I unclipped it so I just got one half of the hoochie and then when I spread it out it turns out the hoochie was almost the perfect width of the boat. So we've used one side, we've used the uh, green side of the hoochie and uh, then I just had to sew it and trim it down. So let's get it set up and then we'll talk more in a second. <laughs> There's a front and the back, so that's the back. We just take the front up, hook it onto, that's the mount you saw me make early on, which still turned out to be useful, which I was glad about because I quite liked the way it looked. <laughs> but so front mount, is that a flat headlight there too? God, plenty of flat headlights. Grab the back. Now Originally I had something coming off the rail baser ports, but then I realized this is overly complicated Why don't we just sort of run it like you would say if you're in the bush looking to uh, set it up You just use two poles. So I got one pole like this It just goes out the back I've got this uh, Strap that I've attached to the center of the seat which fits perfectly into the groove in between the u-deck I just pull that around to the front clip that on and then that's my that's my pole there and that's that so simple then we just can clip it on now I didn't want to drill any holes or put little mounts or brackets here but I really did need this to be able to stretch out this way so I've simply just tied a rope from here to here it's pretty low profile and uh, unoffensive when it's not in use and when it is in use it just sort of holds up here gives me the perfect attachment point so I just clip it in here. These clips are um, all from uh, the old tent. I just ripped off the clips off that before I threw it out. So I've salvaged any parts I could from the actual tent. So in the end, we actually haven't used any new parts. I used, I did this whole tent from stuff I had in the garage already. So I haven't sent a, a I haven't spent a cent in the end, which is great. So we're going to adjust our pole just so it's a bit more straight. And look, there we've got the basis of a pretty cool tent already. If we look under there. Now, I'm not overly happy with the fact that it's got these black Velcro things on it. But it just seemed like the easiest way for now. So I can always just peel them off and polish it up again. And it's like it never happened. So I've done the whole tent. So we didn't actually have to sort of put any holes in the boat. I didn't want to drill holes yet. I didn't want to put anything too permanent because... I've got a feeling that this is going to get adjusted a few times and it's they're not too offensive I think like they don't look too bad I'll, I'll roll with it for now and uh, at least we're not drilling holes and putting something in there that's too permanent so maybe I'll even strap these ones up at the front on the outside normally I'd just do it from the inside but these just are basically getting pulled tight and basically we fold the velcro around and when I'm putting them on I'm just making sure that it stretches over the pole a little bit because we want the rain if it does run we want to run off. This one I found with a bit of hosing uh, that if that was up like that the water sort of runs down in channels and then slips over the edges here. If you have it down it can run into the boat which is a bit of a pain. <laughs> so we did do a water test but it's as simple as just velcroing around and I and then I should be in the boat doing the last ones because I'm going to velcro myself into a corner And these last two clips, I actually use another one of these clips that just goes on there. So if there's a bit of wind pulling, just gives a bit more support. Do some from the inside so you can see. OK, 
Okay, so I can sit down here. There's a bit of room, but uh, I'll go through why I've set it up like this and why it's so low profile. But the idea is I sleep in there, but there's still this back half of the boat where I can still do stuff, uh, which is important. First of all, it's super low profile. So it's, uh, it's designed to deal with wind because typically when I'm getting caught out, it's gonna be in the wind as much as the rain, if not more, the wind is the dangerous part. So the last thing I want is a lot of the tents I was looking at, and some of them are amazing looking uh, boat tents, but the reality is for me, I think the higher they go, the more of a liability they'll be more than a, more than, look, you know, I'm not so much concerned about getting wet, but I am concerned about my tent ripping off or the boat tipping and rocking really heavily in chop and wind uh, if I get caught out in a proper big storm. Uh, so what I really need is something that keeps the sun off for a while and something that just gives me the basic shelter. If it does rain and it's not too crazy, it gives me just the rain's just sweeping off the sides and it gives me somewhere to sleep for that night. What I'd noticed on that last trip uh, on the islands is you can sleep on this ground and I can still do that now. If I turn the esky to the side, I can sleep on one side. But the problem is, and I might just do that sometimes, but the problem is um, sometimes water runs in the self drainers and it comes up the sides and it works its way in these channels and the mat gets wet and then the mat doesn't dry very fast, obviously at night. So the problem is a little bit of water can keep you wet and also if water say comes in at the back from a bit of chop or something like that it could be or if it's really heavy rain it'll fill the back area here and we did put our even though we do have our new bilge uh, all connected and ready to rock and it pumps out very well i tested that too the problem is it takes you know it takes a good you know two inches to really start pumping the water out and that's two inches at the back of the boat so in between you rocking around water slushing up to the front of the boat it's going to be a very wet night so i realized uh, very quickly that I needed to come up with some kind of solution where I could sleep at the front here But we didn't have enough deck to sleep on it. So that brings us to the next issue and solution Which is this guy. Okay, so the new cooler is uh, in effect. So uh, I needed to get a cooler that sat the same height as this uh, Edging here does so we wanted it to be roughly about the same height so what happens is during the day, I can put my fish in it uh, and actually bring ice on my trips now and actually maybe keep a bigger fish for a day or two. But um, when it comes time for sleeping, we pull this out here and we just turn the esky on its side. Here, let me just click this back in. Nice and in the center. And then we've created a sleeping platform. We'll get the air mattress out and we'll show you because that'll make it look a little nicer because it doesn't look that fancy at the moment. <laughs> we'll quickly blow this up. Okay, so we've got our mat out. Now, the beauty of it is, I know this is only just from my legs section, so when I lie down here, it's, uh, my arms can still splay out the side, which gives me more stabilization and it makes me feel comfortable. Typically, I sleep on my stomach, not on my back. That's why I've always avoided hammocks. I do want to give the hammock camping a try, but I'm really worried that it's not going to be very comfortable for me. But I, I will give it a go. So many people suggested hammock, and I would have liked to have sort of come up with something for this, but I'm just so worried that I'm not going to get a good night's sleep because I don't sleep well. If I'm on my back, I tend to, I tend to sit up and just keep thinking about stuff. Whereas if I'm on my side or my stomach, I fall asleep pretty quickly. So I know that's weird. I don't know. It's just maybe obviously what I grew up with. So for me, this is actually going to work really well because on my stomach, I'm super stable. Only my legs just dangle on this edge here. And there's plenty of room up for my upper body, which uh, I'll show you in a sec. So it makes it fairly comfortable. <laughs> so this is where we'll sleep. And I can come all the way up to the front. Obviously, I needed to keep this little area clear as well because we will be using that for the anchor because I'll be anchored at night. But essentially, I've got a little edge here that I can put that on. Essentially, I'll just be sleeping like this. <laughs> and I can have my arms right out to the side if I need to. And um, yeah, with the little pillow, uh, I've got plenty of room. I don't feel like it's going to be super uncomfortable. And I do like the fact that, and then some people might think this is pointless, but I do like the fact that I can peek out around the edges and see what's going on. Because all throughout the night, when I'm lying down, down there, 
I can't peek out and see what's happening around me and uh, sometimes I like to look out and get my bearings and see what's around and uh, maybe there might be some lights I can see or some stars that I can get my bearings about which way I'm facing and swinging and little things like that go to me uh, add up to making a good night's sleep or not um, will this keep me dry in a super big storm no no it won't it absolutely won't but I've got a feeling that if I get caught in some of some of the storms I got caught in recently on that short film festival were so big and bad that if you were in a tent which was right up over you like in a big dome I think it would be definitely very quickly become more of a liability than an actual good tent on that water I would much prefer to get wet and be safe and have the boat under control than have the boat you know acting like a sail and just getting pushed around and manhandled and tipping right over I made it flexible as well so this is a bungee cord it's eight mil so it's still pretty strong and it's got a bit a fair bit of pressure on it but it can if the wind gets out of control flex and move with the wind and uh, it's supported on just about every angle so if it's blowing from this side that will pull tight if it's blowing from the front there's heaps of velcro holding that tight in that super low profile so I hope it will whip up like that so typically the wind would be coming from where I've anchored and pushing me back this way which means the wind, wind should be sweeping straight up and one of the biggest things about this tent is if it was all enclosed and went over the bow, bow rail which is something I was considering it would be stinking hot <laughs> so heat and uh, getting wet isn't such a big deal a lot of places on camping because it's warm pretty much most of the year so you're not really in a case where you're going to get hypothermia or freeze to death if you get a bit damp whereas getting overheated is actually more of a problem and in a boat tent if that was fully enclosed in this whole area it would be stinking hot right now even in just in this sun let alone up in the tropics uh, in the far north Queensland where I'll be going so yeah this was more it's more about sunshade and light to medium rain and dealing with wind unless it's crazy wind and rain then we'll have an issue and then but if that's the if that's the case the, when the when bigger storms like that hit it's more about damage control rather than worrying so much about whether you're getting wet or not anyway <laughs> but all in all i think it was a success i think uh the only way to find out is to take it out and give it a test run but uh yeah no i think it looks pretty slick and uh for just bits i found around the garage i think we've we've had a pretty good success This is definitely something I wanted to show you as well before we wrap it up. I can move this tent around. I can re-anchor by undoing a few bits of Velcro and I can drive the boat. So even if I'm down here, I can still see over here and drive the boat. It's not going to get caught in the wind. If it had some kind of closed base or the front just wrapped straight over the gunnels, then I wouldn't be able to re-anchor and driving the boat is still a snap at the moment. So they're definitely things that I considered and I needed to sort of know that I could do one out in the islands because I don't know, I might not have time, for instance, to, you know what I mean, muck around too much if I need to re-anchor or reposition the boat or get the engines fired up. I need to sort of be able to move straight away and this allows me to do that. So that was definitely a cool consideration. Which, uh, the more I thought about it, there's lots of other little things that sort of kept popping up that I had to do. And I'm glad I checked that one off the box because now I feel a lot more uh, able to deal with different situations if they arise. There's a lot of islands out there that are almost, you can't land on them. Like there's no beach or it's just too rocky or the coral, it's coral instead of sand. But they're beautiful islands. And like the, over half of the islands I've been to, the other half are islands like that where you cannot land on them. Uh, and there's also the outer reef where I'd like to go. I'd love to go like that could be maybe the next trip where I go if I get a good weather window and I just park myself in a blue hole and I just stay there for a week. That would be something. So this is what we're getting geared up for. We're getting geared up to tackle places that you just couldn't go before. This boat opens up a whole new set of islands and and seriously it's over half, over half the ones I've been to there's another double that where that is just a little inhospitable when it comes to landing the craft or being able to get it on the island. And, uh, but they're like equally, if not more so amazing and in some pretty crazy spots. So hopefully this boat allows me to get into those and, and lots more, but we still will be definitely getting up on the islands when it's possible. And uh, 
I think uh, there'll, be, there'll be a nice mix. You certainly aren't forgetting to get on the islands, go for a bit of an explore and uh, set up a tent on the islands. We'll definitely be doing that too. But hopefully you enjoyed this one. It's just a quick look at the, uh, the tent and let me know what you think in the comments because I'm sure there'll be opinions on this one. There was a hell of a lot of people suggesting uh, different options and I know the lateral line guys, their tent is it really is awesome and I, like I'm, I'm very envious but their boat is a li lot bigger and their setup was uh, to deal with a different kind of climate and a different kind of situation so uh, I didn't I don't think it would have worked for me but um, and I probably would have had to pay someone to make it as well I don't know and yeah so there was a lot of there was a lot of stumbling blocks here I'm trying to do it lo-fi and just so uh, get it going on without um without uh, parting with too much coin so I think this will be a first Mark 1, a first good attempt. And we'll see what happens from here on. That's how small it packs up to. 